ان الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله عليه من ربي افضل الصلاه والتسليم اما بعد تبسي بفضل الله تبارك وتعالى for allowing us to gather here today fi baytin min buyutillah and one of the houses from the houses of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala na tawasi bil haq wa na tawasi bil sabr to encourage each other with the truth and encourage each other with consistency and patience upon the truth and i ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fa athabat wa sadad ila al mamat and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala makes us firm and keeps us straight until the day that we meet him tabarak wa ta'ala for verily the affairs were stated by al imam abdullah ibn al mubarak al marwazi shaykh al islam rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi from the imams of the tabi tabi'in who was as some of these salaf in his time they said he was the best of his generation Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak al-Marwazi he said I'lam ya akhi I'lam ya akhi no o my brother ana al-mawt al-yawm karamatun min Allah liman laqiya Allah ala sunnah that death today is a gift from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala for whoever meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the sunnah. فَإِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ For verily we belong to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and indeed we shall return back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the reality of the affair. And in that a person's lifespan and how long they live is not guaranteed. And that each and every single person should take the opportunity while Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has given them health and well-being and the faculties to be able to do so to increase in beneficial knowledge and increase in benefiting from that knowledge by understanding what he has learned and in applying it to his heart so it has an effect upon his behavior it has effect upon his dealings with his lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has an effect upon his love of his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has an effect upon his fulfilling the rights of the people and his justice and his fairness it has an effect upon him from every nahiya from every direction and he increases in beneficial knowledge on a daily basis and that he focuses his life upon learning and spreading the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said tasma'un wa yusma'u minkum he said you people hear me wa yusma'u minkum and people are going to hear you wa yusma'u man yasma'u minkum and people are going to hear from those that heard from you and the knowledge is carried around where it's carried and conveyed passed on generation after generation mushafahatan taken from the mouths of the carriers the hamalat of al-ilm carriers of knowledge and it cannot be taken from people any who are not benefited by what they have learned as Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala he said in his tremendous book Al-Fawaid he said Quta'u al-Tariq 
that those people that are like highway robbers, like bandits, as regards the Sirat al Mustaqim, as regards the path that leads to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, they are people who are standing upon the path saying, Halumu ilayna, come and be with us. While their actions are saying, don't listen to anything they have to say. Don't listen to anything that they have to say. For wallahi, by Allah, if they truly believe what they said, they will be the first to act upon it. So this is the reality of the affair. Any beneficial knowledge is that which has a tremendous effect upon the heart of the person. And the behavior of a person, therefore. And the way that a person deals with others and interacts with others. He deals with who he deals with. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya khafu Allah hafihim wa la ya khafuhum fillah. As Ibn Taymi rahimullah ta'ala, he said in Majmu al Fatawa, that he fears Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as regards his dealings with the people, but he doesn't fear the people as regards Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yarju Allah fihim wa la yarjuhum fillah. And he hopes for the reward of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as regards how he deals with the people, but he doesn't hope for anything from them because of what he is doing for Allah. These are the people that have been affected by what they have learned. It was said by Masruq ibn Abdul Rahman, Rahmatullahi alayhi who was the, from the most premier students of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. That he said, Kafa bi khashiyatillahi ilma. He said, there is enough of a person to be considered to have knowledge that they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose of knowledge. That it causes a person to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We heard the statement of Al-Hasan al-Basri. It's a tremendous statement. It's reported with the chain of narrators that are all thiqat. There are all trustworthy narrators. From Al Imam ibn Abi Dunya in his book Al Ishraf fi Manazil al Ashraf. From Al Hassan al Basri, where he said that I adraktu sadra hadhi al Ummah. He said, I met the sadr. And he's the foremost part of this nation, the companions of the Prophet. Then I lived for a very long time until I met you all. Speaking to the second generation. Speaking to the second generation. Uh, before the rest of his statement. Another one of the Tabi'een, Maymoon ibn Mihran. Al Jazari. It was reported from his father. Maymun ibn Mihran was one of the Imams. Al Hassan al Basri was the Imam of Basra, which is where? Iraq. Basra was a military town for the Muslim army that was built when they were at war with the Persians and he, for the families of the soldiers and so on and so forth. And it became to today one of the cities of the Muslims. He was the Imam of the people of Basra in the time of the Tabi'een. His brother in Islam and in knowledge, Maymun ibn Mihran al-Jazari, who was the Imam of the Jazira, the area of Tabuk and that which is just south of Asham, and what is called the Jazira. He said, or rather his father said and his father Mihran al-Jazari was from the Sahaba he was from the youth of the Sahaba he said Law an rajulan mina salaf nushira fikum he said if a man from the Salaf was to be resurrected amongst you all ma arafa ghayra hadihi al-qibla he wouldn't recognize anything from your Islam except for the Qibla that's the statement of Mihran al-Jazari, the father of Maymun ibn Mihran, who was the Imam of the Jazira during the reign of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and during the time of the Tabi'i. So he was speaking to 
the second generation of Muslims. مَعَسَاهُ أَنْ يَقُولُ لَوْ أَدْرَكَنَا What did he say if he saw us? He saw the Muslims of today. What would the Sahaba and the Tabi'een say? Going back to the statement of Al-Hasan al-Basri. Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimullah ta'ala. He said that I encountered the first, the Sadr, and the chest, the first part, the forefront of this nation, meaning the Sahaba of the Prophet and Hassan al-Basri, they said he met 120 companions of the Prophet He met 120 companions of the Prophet He said, then I lived a very long life. Had to adraktukum, until I met you all. And then he talked about how they benefited from the religion, what they had learned from the religion. And we heard this earlier, but it's good. And it was a benefit in repetition. He said that they had more vision with their hearts as regards their deen than you have with your eyes as regards your dunya. Allahi brothers, this is one of the most amazing descriptions I've ever heard. And there are many statements that are similar to this from Al-Hasan al-Basri and Maimun ibn Mihran and many of the any early scholars and even some of the Sahaba themselves describing the Salaf describing the early generation of Muslims. But this has to be one of the most amazing statements I've ever read or heard. And it's very concise and comprehensive. He said, Wallahi, they had more vision with their hearts as regards their religion than you have with your eyes as regards your dunya. I mean, they had what? They had al-fahm, al-sahih, al-thaqib, had strong, radiant understanding as regards their religion. And their religion wasn't something that they were upon because their fathers and mothers were Muslims. Their religion wasn't something that, was a, that they were upon because their people had embraced Islam. And so they were just doing what everybody else had done. But rather, many of these imams especially in the tabi'een. After the death of the great imams of the salaf from the ulama, such as Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Amr, Zayd ibn Thabit, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and others from the ulama of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu that in every land, the ulama of that land in the time of the Tabi'een, except for, with the exception of al Medina, they were all Mawali. They were all freed slaves. They were from the children of the freed slaves. Al-Sa ibn Abi Rabbah, a dark African man, was who? The Imam of the Haram al Makki. They said that the Mashad al Haram was the home of Atai ibn Abi Rabbah for more than 25 or 30 years. Every day he slept, he slept in the Mashad al-Haram. Rahmatullahi alayhi, the Mufti of Mecca. Scala after scala from the Mawari, and the second generation of Islam. What had caused him to progress in their religion and knowledge, al-ilm, knowledge, al-basira. They had a strong understanding of Islam. It was something, as Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he explains that they are, as regards al-Basira, and he, that there are three categories of al-Basira. In his book, Madariz al-Salikin, he said that what al-Basira is, is where a person can see something with his heart, just as his eye see something physically. That something is... Like he can see it with his heart. It is so clear. There are many statements of the Salaf in that regards. Waqi ibn al Jarrah from the Tabi Tabi'een. What do you say? He said, Wallahi ma salaytu salatan qat. He said, I swear by Allah, I've never ever made a salat. Illa 
وَكَأَنِّي أَرَى النَّارِ تِلْقَاءَ وَجْهِ Except that it was as though I could see the fire right in front of me. Imagine if every time you went to the salah, you could see the fire right in front of you. And the person, he's standing there and he's saying, if the hellfire was right in front of my face, and everything that Allah has described in amazing detail the fire with, and the terror and the hideousness of the fire, and as much as you can imagine what the hellfire must be like, you know that it is horrible and terrifying even beyond what you can imagine. As much as you can imagine the hellfire, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. And the fire about which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he said, that when the hellfire sees its denizens, its soon to be inhabitants on the day of judgment from a far off distance. Because we know what? Hadith Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Sahih Muslim. The hellfire is going to be brought on the day of judgment. It's going to have 70,000 enormous chains. Each chain being dragged by 70,000 angels. The tremendousness of which only Allah Ta'ala knows. When it's being brought close, when the hellfire sees them, they hear the hellfire raging and roaring. They're going to hear the fire raging and roaring. Allahu Akbar. It was stated by one of the Salaf, he said, Tazfiru al jahannamu yawm al qiyama zafratan wahida. He said, on the day of judgment, the hellfire is going to exhale with a roaring one time. It's going to roar, exhaling. One time. لا يبقى منها ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل إلا خر لركبتيه من الحوى. And there won't remain a single prophet sent by Allah or an angel that was close to the throne of Ar Rahman Taala, close to Allah, except that they will fall upon their knees in terror. The prophets and the messengers will be terrified. What about the rest of the people? What about the kafara? What about the Mubtari'ah? What about the Dulal? What about the Mudilleen? What about those people who lied upon Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and introduced into the religion that which they had no authority for? And they will come Yama Qiyama while they had told the people that if they practice those innovative practices they will get closer to Allah and they will find and they will find that they had the harder they worked and their innovations, the farther they got from Allah Taala, Mudilleen, people that are astray and leading other people astray. What would their condition be? What would the condition be of people who didn't give any importance to learning beneficial knowledge throughout their life? You live in a time of information and technology and all sorts of things are accessible to you to help you learn your religion especially as the men of our homes having children and wives that, and if we're in a pitiful condition then their situation is normally going to be even worse than us you never take the initiative to learn anything or to practice anything and implement anything and when you're with the people you're one person on the outside of the message you're another person in these sorts of affairs if our condition is pitiful what would their pit condition be? and it will be a day that we have been told by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and ordered by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala to prepare for as regards saving ourselves and our families from the fire. With what? And he, these ayat, they have tafsir. The tafsir of the Salaf, the tafsir of the Sahaba. Aladina Bashar al Wahi was people that directly encountered the coming of the revelation to the Prophet Sallallahu and how he explained it and how they understood it applied to their communities. How did they understand that? Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, Hey, allimuhum wa addibuhum. Save you and your families from the fire means teach them and discipline them. Teach them and impart adab, meaning akhlaqun tayyibah hasana. 
good, beautiful character to your family. Those qualities that are love to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. تُحْرَمُ النَّارُ عَلَى كُلِّ هَيِّنِ لَيِّنِ سَحْلٍ قَرِيبٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ Hadithun Sahih. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, the fire has been forbidden for every person who was hayyin, layyin, sahlin, qareebin min al-nas. Hayyin, mutawadi'a. Every person that is humble in their dealings with others. Layyin, who is gentle in their dealings with others. Their speech is easy. Their dealings are easy. They deal with people as comes in the hadith of Abdullah bin Amr in Sahih Muslim. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, تَجِيُّ الْفِتَنُ فَيُرَقِقُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا That in the latter generations of the time of the Salaf, that fitna is going to befall the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every time it comes, it will make what came before it seem light. The hadith of Anas ibn Malik, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's not a year except the one that comes after it will be worse than it to you, meet Allah. Right? Every time fitna comes, it will make what came before it seem light. What does a person do? Because fitna leads to the hellfire. A person who gets caught up in fitna, and he goes astray. So I prophesy some he used to seek refuge from fitna to mudilla. And from fitna that leads astray because it's the nature of fitna. Fitna is shubuhat and shahawat. All of fitna is two types. Doubts and desires. Everything in fitna goes back to doubts and desires. A person he gets caught up by his doubts, it leads to the fire. He gets caught up by his desires, I warn you of those sins that are taken lightly. Because why? Because they accumulate like a person accumulating wood for fire, for a bonfire. They accumulate little by little until they engulf a person. A person is caught up in a shahawat. He's caught up in a shubuhat. He lives in a time where people have spent and invested trillions of dollars in technologies to twist and warp the minds of the people and to program people and he, the same people that brought the world sciences like personality engineering behavioral engineering these sorts of things developing technologies to push their message through to push their agenda through he lives at a time like this where shahawat are rampant desires are rampant the tools of destruction your child may at any given time, once they reach a certain age, and like many Muslim parents, you give your child this device and that device, they may be walking around with five, three or four or five devices of self-destruction at any given time. They could listen to music on that. They could talk to girls on that. They could do this on that. They could do that on that. And the people, they take it lightly. Shubuhat and shahawat to addi in nari jahannam. And these doubts and these desires are going to lead people to the hellfire. And lead people right into the hellfire. He's been ordered what? Attack his children. Or attack himself. Protect his wife from the fire. What's a person going to say? And he, when they didn't learn anything about their religion. And they didn't give importance to the salah. Abdullah or Al-Imam Ahmed rahimullah ta'ala. He said... يَعْلَمْ يَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ No, a slave of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. أَنَا قَدْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ فِي قَلْبِكَ بِحَسَبِ قَدْرِ الصَّلَاةِ فِي قَلْبِكَ That the value of Islam in your heart is according to the value of... Uh, the value of Islam in your heart is only according to the value of the salah in your heart. فَإِيَّاكَ يَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ تَلْقَ اللَّهِ وَلَا قَدْرَ لِلْإِسْلَامِ عَنْدَكَ so be careful, O slave of Allah, that you meet Allah while Islam is worthless to you. Never taught his children to pray. Never taught his wife to pray. He doesn't know how to pray himself. He collects all three of these things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the Hadith of Sahih Muslim when he said, Tilka salatul munafiq, tilka salatul munafiq, tilka salatul munafiq. That's the salat of a munafiq, that's the salat of a munafiq, that's the salat of a munafiq. What? And the person who waits until the sun is about to set. He waits until the sun is right about to set. That's the first thing. He has let it go outside of his proper time. He has neglected his time. And the second thing, what? ثُمَّ نَقِرَ And then he pecks the ground for four raka'at. Like a crow, pecking the ground. Right? 
لا يذكر الله فيه إلا قليلا لا يذكر الله فيها إلا قليلا and he doesn't remember Allah during his salah except for very little and he, his mind is absent in his salah he has no focus, no concentration in his salah the hadith of Anas ibn Malik or the Prophet sallallahu he said perhaps a man will pray ولا يكتب له من صلاته إلا عشرها perhaps a man will make his salat and nothing will be written for his salat except for a tenth of it. Tusu'uha, a ninth of it. Thumunuha, a eighth of it. Subu'uha, or a seventh of it. Sudusuha, or a sixth of it. Khumusuha, or a fifth of it. Rubu'uha, or a fourth of it. Thuruthuha, a third of it. Nusfuha, or half of it. That's the most that was mentioned by the Prophet That a person has presentness of mind during half of their salat. Perhaps a person will pray and nothing will be written for them of their salat except for a tenth, a ninth, an eighth, a seventh, a half. The most that was mentioned was a half. لا يذكر الله فيها إلا قليلا. He doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his salat. What is he praying for? And he's praying because he has to pray. I gotta pray. You doing Allah a favor? Allah Akbar. You doing Allah a favor by praying? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghaniun ala alameen. And we pray for us. Inna salata tanha anan fahshai wa munkar. Indeed, the salah prevents the people from fahshai and munkar. Prevents the people from destructive behavior. The salat is for us. And when the person understands that everything that he does is a favor from Allah upon him and he's not doing himself or he's not doing anyone a favor but himself by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That person doesn't care. Doesn't learn anything from his religion. He doesn't practice the most basic things of his religion in his home. It doesn't matter if his wife or children pray. It doesn't matter. Allah knows what's in our heart. Something that should terrify a person. Allah knows what's in my heart. Allah Akbar. يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ فَحْضَرُوهُ Imam Muhammad, on Amin al-Shanqid, he said, أَعْضَمُ مَوْعِدًا نَزَلَتْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ He said the greatest admonition sent from the heavens to the earth can be found on almost every single page of the Quran. لا تكاد تخلو صفحة من كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى من هذه الموعدة البليغة It is almost not a single page in the book of Allah except that somewhere on this page you're going to find an admonition of the fact that Allah sees everything, hears everything, knows all. Is خبير نطيف has knowledge of the most intricate affairs. He knows what is secret, meaning what a person is thinking, what is even more hidden than that, meaning what he will think before he thinks it. Or a person says, Allah knows I'm a good person in my heart. Allah knows what is in my heart. And if a person was to realize that Allah knows what he is thinking and what is in his heart, he should be terrified of Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. A person doesn't care what's he going to do, the hellfire is brought. Now look at the salaf. Think about that statement. Because this is our problem. Part of our problem is that people, when they learn stuff, they learn it to They learn it to just have more information and more data. But they don't take the time to really digest what they've learned and to really think deeply about what they've learned. A person can learn the Quran from Fatiha to Nas. From Fatiha to Nas. And not benefit from it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, munafiqi hadhihi al-umma qurra'uha. He said, the majority of munafiqs from this nation are from the reciters. It's authentic hadith. Learn the Quran from Fatiha to Nas. Why? Just to say that you learned it? So, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said, لا يكون هم أحدكم آخر السورة. He said, don't let the aspiration and ambition of one of you be to finish a surah. Or rather, a person is to stop at any ayat in the book of Allah wa Taala and give it its just due. Give it a nasib and a portion of contemplation and reflection and so on and so forth. Think about that statement. Waqi'a ibn al-Jarrah rahmatullahi alayhi That great imam he said, I never ever prayed a single salah. Except that it was as though I could see the hellfire right in front of me. I could see the hellfire right in front of me. 
It's like the statement of the Prophet so in a hadith great to be Hassan by Shaykh Rabbani Rahimullah Ta'ala. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said on one occasion when the Muslims were about to pray, he said, Sallu salatan wa da'ah. You hear people say that. If you say that every time you pray, it's an innovation. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't say it every time he was learning his companions to pray, but he said it on one occasion, so it can be said from time to time. Pray like it's your last prayer. Uh, one narration Sallu salata rajulin La yara annahu sayusalli salatan ba'daha He said pray the salat of a man Who thinks that he may never pray again It's your last prayer Your last prayer Wa iyaakum wa kulla amrin yu'tadaru min And I furthermore He said warn you of every affair That you will have to seek an excuse for in front of Allah That you have to make an excuse for yourself In front of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala about they had basira like that. The statement of Al-Hasan al-Basri. That they had more basira, they had more vision with their hearts as regards their deen than you have with your eyes as regards your dunya. The paradise was like that for them. Fire was like that for them. What they knew about the barzakh. And some of the companions... had a hard time eating had a hard time eating after reading the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala وَمَا مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا there is not a single one of you except he's going to have to pass over it meaning over the fire meaning over the sirat that goes over the back of the hellfire from the earth into the paradise the fact that what they say Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak reported in Kitab al-Zuhd from some of the salaf that they read this verse and they would cry, they would have a hard time eating some of the name. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, He guaranteed that we will all have to cross through it, cross over it. But He has not guaranteed that we will make it all the way. He has not guaranteed that we will make it all the way. Al-Zahabi rahimullah ta'ala, He said, whoever doesn't imagine that he may be in the fire is maghroor. Whoever doesn't imagine that he's going to be in the fire is deluded. He is deluded. How often does that come to a person's mind? That you may be from the people of the fire. Who are the people of the fire? The mushrikun, the kuffar, the munafiqun. Are we safe from shirk? Are we safe from shirk? Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. He said, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي أَجْعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَاجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَا نَعْبُدَ الْأَسْلَامِ Oh Allah, make this a safe land and prevent me and my children from worshipping idols. And prevent me and my children from worshipping idols. It's a worry of Ibrahim. وَمَنْ يَعْمَنْ بَعْدَ Ibrahim. Some of the Sanat they said, and who would feel safe from shirk after Ibrahim was afraid of shirk? The person is afraid of kufr or not. It was stated by the great Imam at Tabi'i al Jalil from the students of Mu'ad ibn Jabal and many, many, many of the companions of the Prophet. Abu Idris al Khawlani, he was one of those people that he sat with one scholar from the Sahaba and then when that scholar died, he would tell him, Go to Fulan. And he went to another Sahaba until he died, and he said, Go to so and so. Until he died. Abu Jusin Khulani, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, alayhi, who had taken knowledge and he sat at the feet of the ulama of the companions until they died. Listen to his statement. It was reported from Al Fariyabi, Sifat al Munafiqeen, or Sifat al Nifaq, or Dham al Munafiqeen. This tremendous book about Nifaq authentically, the authentic chain of narration to Abu Jusin Khulani. He said, ما على ظهرها من أحد لا يخاف على إيمانه أن يذهب إلا ذهب. There's not a single person on the face of the earth who doesn't fear losing his iman except he has already lost it. There's nobody on the face of the earth who isn't afraid of kufr except that he has already lost his iman. Hey, a person is not afraid of kufr for himself, as was stated by Al Hasan al Basri. Authentically that he said that no one fears nifaq except for a believer. 
I don't feel safe from nifaq except for a munafiq, except for a hypocrite. Those are the people of the fire. Alayhi sallallahu Isn't that the case? The munafiqun, the kuffar, the mushrikun are the people of the fire. And there is no one from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min al-muntasibin ila al-qibla. From those that ascribe their self to the qibla who have more of the descriptions of the munafiqin than the people of bira wa dala. In every time and every place. What is the descriptions of the munafiqun? The category is nifaqun akbar mukhraj min al millah. Major nifaq that removes a person from Islam are six. Takdeeb al Rasul, rejecting the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or takdeeb i ba'di ma jaa bihi Rasul, or rejecting anything that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with. And how much does that exist with the people of innovation? If a person was outright reject something, knowing it came from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, bi duni ta'wil in batil, without I mean, just a false misinterpretation of the religion or a false reason, I and mean, they said that they rejected. Something because he said this thing is illogical. This thing, I and mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean, that is an act of kufr. That is an act of kufr. Now, a person who has a misunderstanding about something of the religion and he misinterprets something in such a fashion, I mean, then that act may remove him from the sunnah to being from the people of innovation. So a person who rejects the Prophet or rejects anything that he came with. And how much does that exist with the people of innovation? Or he hates the Prophet or hates anything that he came with. Those are the first four categories. Or what? Or he hates to see the preeminence and victory of the religion of the Prophet wasallam. Hates to see that Islam should be uppermost in the earth. Or he what? Or he is pleased and happy that the religion of the Messenger should be weak in the earth. So a person has to evaluate their self. And what is their level of tasdeeq? What is their level of affirmation? When they hear something that came from Allah, came from the Messenger, where are they at as regards really understanding that thing? And believing that it is a true reality. That it is a true reality. Where are they at with that? Look at the statement of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He said the last khutbah that was given by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He said, O oh people, either you believe in the hereafter, فأنتم حمقى. وهذا عمالكم فأنتم حمقى. Either you do believe in the hereafter, and you still act like that, and so you retire it. وَإِمَّا أَنَّكُمْ مُكَذِّبُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ فَأَنْتُمْ حَلْكَعْ Or either you don't believe in the hereafter and so you are destroyed. And you're from the kuffar if you don't believe in the hereafter. This is a statement of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz to people in the time of the Tabi'een and dealing with his people as regards their taqseer their shortcoming and their lack of zeal and vigor as regards their religion. So a person, they look at that. Where are they at with their tasdeeq? Where are they at with their mahabba? When something comes from Allah, it comes from the Prophet ﷺ. A beneficial information and the orders of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah ta'ala. How does their heart feel about that? Does their heart realize that everything that Allah has instructed them with and inform them of that it is of a greater benefit and good for them than they could begin to imagine? Or do they feel as though any of their religion is preventing them from things that any they would otherwise like to do and things that they would do if they were not in the presence of the Muslims and so on and so forth? And where are they at with that? Why are they doing the things that they are doing? Are they doing them because they love those things? Or are they doing them because any they feel compelled to do so. Where is their love for those things? Where is their support of the religion? Don't they understand 
that supporting the religion of Allah wa Taala is mandatory upon every single person. As was stated by Ibn Qayyim rahimullah Taala, and the conclusion of his Nuniya, he said, "Hada wa nasr dini farudun wajibun la lil kifayati bal ala al ayani bil yad wa imma bil isani fa in ajazta fa bil tawajjuh wa dua bi janani." He said that the support of the religion of Allah wa Taala is a mandatory obligation, not upon some people, but upon every single Muslim. Bil yad to support physically with your hands, with your wealth, with your resources. Wa imma bil isan or with your tongue, or either with your tongue, is a mandatory obligation upon every single Muslim to order the good and forbid the evil. And to call to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and to advise the creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala according to what they have of knowledge of the religion, not according to what they don't know, <laughs> as was stated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, "لا يمنع أن أحدكم مخافة الناس وفي لفظ هيبة الناس أن يتكلم بحق إذا علم لا ننبي ببرنا by his fear." Respected people from speaking the truth, either alina, on the condition of what when he knows it, when he has knowledge of the truth, so long as he has knowledge of it, and the person who knows something, and he knows that it is likely that a person is going to take advice from them, or at least listen to what they have to say, and it's not going to lead to a greater evil. It's mandatory for them to order the good and forbid the evil. ولا يخاف في الله لو متلاه، and not to fear the blame of the blamers when it comes to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Where are we from that? Where are the people from that? Ordering the good and forbidding the evil, according to the scope of their knowledge, without fearing the blame of the blamers when it comes to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It was stated by the best of the Tabi'een, whose name was Uwais ibn Amr al Qarni. Uwais al Qarni. It's a narration, great to be authentic by many of the ulama. I said that the best of the tabi'een, the ihsan, those that followed the companions in goodness, was Uwais ibn Amr al-Qarni. That he said, إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ بِالْمَعْرُوفَ النَّهِ عَنَ الْمُنْكَرِ لَمْ يَدْعَى لَمْ يَدْعَى لِأَهَدٍ صُدِّيقًا Ordering the good and forbidding the evil has never left a friend for a person. Ordering the good and forbidding the evil has never left a person with a friend, with a single friend. He said, "نَعْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفَ يَشْتِمُونَ عَرَاضَنَا." He said, "We order with them with the good, and they slander us and lie on us. We call them to the sunnah, we call them to the khair, we warn them against evil, we warn them of what opposes the sunnah, and the people start to slander us and lie on us and ridicule us and so on and so forth." He said, "By Allah, we will not stop establishing the right of Allah to Rabbul Taala upon the people, so long as we are amongst them. So long as we are amongst them. Where is a person from that? Where is a person from that? I saw the early generation had vision as regards the religion. He mentioned Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah Taala. He mentioned three categories of al-basira. The first is al-basira." Is vision as regards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is to know Allah through His names, His attributes, and His actions, on account of which He alone deserves to be worshipped. His names, His attributes, and His actions, on which He account He alone, on account of which He alone deserves to be worshipped. So that person, the more they know about the beautiful names of Allah, the better they can worship Allah. Each name. Has a tremendous effect upon the heart of a person. As Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah Taala he said in his book Idda Tul Sabirin, he said, "وَمَنْ تَعَلَّقَ بِصِفَاتِ مِنْ صِفَاتِهِ أَخَذَتُهُ بِيَدِهِ هَتَى تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَيْهِ." He said that whoever connects their heart to a single attribute or name of Allah Taala, then that knowledge of that attribute or name of Allah would take that person by the hand until it enters them upon Allah Taala for the meeting. With Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, a man he was asked by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
when he was appointed as an emir, and when he was appointed as an emir over the army, and they had been traveling, and every salah, he recited, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ إِلَّهُ الصَّلَدِ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ he says, Salam. He said, ask him why he did that. He said, Lianna fiha sifatul Rahman. He said, because it has the description of Rahman in it. Wa anna uhibu an akara'aha. He said, I love to read the description of Rahman to Barakat Allah. The Prophet said, he said, He said, Akhbir wa anna hubbahu iya adkhaluhu al jannah. He said, tell that man that his love of it has entered him into the Jannah. Has entered him into the Jannah. We'll say that by Abdullah ibn Mubarak and by Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahumullah ta'ala, that they said, Masakinu ahl dunya dhahabu min dunya wa ma dhahu atiyaba ma fiha. That the unfortunate people are those that leave from this world without tasting the best thing in it. Ma'rifatullah, which is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the greatest basira a person can have is to understand about Allah and His names and His attributes and His what? And His actions. Which is also called what? The actions of Allah and singling out Allah with His actions that Allah alone is able to do those actions. This is called the Tawheed of Ar-Hububiyya Ifradullahi bi af'alihi Singling out Allah with His actions is the Tawheed of Ar-Hububiyya and so when he knows about the names, the attributes, the actions of Allah, and he'll know that there is nothing that is deserving of his love and his hope and his fear and reliance and all those other maqamat and thibadah, those stations and levels that a person worships Allah ta'ala with as regarding what occurs in his heart, then that. And so a person They want to know what the salaf were upon. Go back to the statement of Al Hassan al Basri. Said they have more vision with their hearts concerning their religion than you have with your eyes concerning your dunya. This basira is of three types. He said the first type, knowing about Allah, is having vision, meaning knowledge as regards what? Allah's names, His attributes, and His actions, on account of which He alone has. The right to be worshipped, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. The second maqam, the second type of al basira is to have al basira as regards the deen of Allah ta'ala, as regards the sirat al mustaqim, the straight path that leads to Allah ta'ala, which is what? Al Islam. Abu al Ali al Riyahi, rahmatullahi alayhi. Likewise, from the Imams of Basra, from the Tabi'een, who was older than Al Hassan al Basri, and was a student of knowledge before him, he said, May Allah have mercy upon him, he said, Ta'allamu Islam. Fa'idha ta'allam tumuhu fa la tarqabu an. He said, Learn Islam. And once you have learned Islam, then never lose interest in Islam. Wa alaykum yu sirat al mustaqeen. فَإِنُّهُ الْإِسْلَامِ He said, and I advise you to be upon the sirat al-mustaqeen for verily it is Islam. For verily it is Islam. In the tafsir, the statement of Allah, إِحْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ The scholars, they mentioned the hadith reported by Al-Tirmidhi and others, the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, ضرب الله مثلا سيرات مستقيما وعلى جنبتي سيرات سرآن فيهما أبواب مفتحة وعلى الأبواب سطور مرخاء وعلى رأس سيرات داع يقول أيها الناس دخلوا سيرات جميعا ولا تتعوجوا ومن فوق سيرات داع فإذا أراد أحد أن يفتح شيئا من تلك الأبواب يقول ويحك لا تفتح فإنك إن فتحته تلج فالسيرات الإسلام Allah has given the parable of the straight path. Allah has given a parable of a what? A straight path. And the sides of the path are 
Suran, two walls. The half open of doors in them. A person is to envision the straight path, the walls, the doors. Upon the doors are Sutur Murcha, and he curtains, drapings, loose drapings over the doors that prevent the person from seeing what is on the other side of those doors. This little person can see the end result of deviating from the path and going into doubts and desires and destructive behaviors. They will probably stay away from them. It's an empty hand. It's a test from Allah. Tadarak wa ta'ala. Upon me, over those doors are loose dreams. At the head of the path, there is a corner that is saying, Oh, mankind, all of you, every last one of you, enter the path. And don't go crooked. And don't go crooked. And above the path, there is another corner that says to a person whenever he wants to pull back any of those drapings to go through those doors and offer the sirat of musaqeem وَيْحَكَ لَا تَفْتَحُ Woe be to you! Oh, open it up! Because if you open it up, you're going to pass right through it. Right? The person that goes close to the shubuhat, right? To the mushtabihat, to the da'afal affairs, grazing in the sanctuary Allah has forbidden He's going to what? Soon he's going to fall away into the haram. Right? Woe be to you, don't go through it. If you go through it, you're going to pass through it. The sirat is Islam. The Prophet said, so said, the sirat is Islam. And the abwaab al and the suran, and the two walls are hududullah. They're the boundaries of Allah. Wal abwaab al maharimullah. And the doors that are open up. And those walls are the forbidden matters. Shirk, kufr, bid'a, ma'asiyah. According to what it is, will be how far a person goes off of the path. Right? And the corner at the head of the path is the book of Allah. And the corner from above is wa'idullahi fi qalbi kulli muslim. The corner from above is the admonisher from Allah in the heart of every muslim. Some of the scholars, they said it was mentioned by Munawi and Fayyid al-Qadir that Allah knows best of what is meant by the wa'id of Allah the amanashir from Allah wa ta'ala in the heart of every Muslim is what is mentioned in the hadith of Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud reported by a terminally and graded to be authentic by a Shaykh al-Bani rahimullah ta'ala fi akhiri umrihi the beginning of his life he graded to be weak and he found things that make it reach the level of authenticity. It's the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. It's something that can only be said. It cannot be said because of a person's opinion or their personal view about a thing. It can only be said by a companion hearing it from the Prophet So it takes the ruling of being from the Prophet The Prophet he said, That indeed the shaytan that is what the person, meaning his kareem, has a lemma. It has a place, a proximity, of closeness where it can have an effect upon the person and encourage the person with evil and destructive behavior and so on and so forth. And indeed the angel likewise has a lemma. It has the same ability. Because a person also has what? Huh? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, ما منك من أهل إلا وكر به قرينه من الجن وقرينه من الملائكة. There's not a single one of you except he has appointed to him a قرين from the jinn and a قرين from the ملائكة. That's why he must. There's not a single one of you except he has appointed to him a قرين from the jinn, a companion from the jinn that will be with him his life, his entire life, and a قرين from the ملائكة. فَلَمَّةُ الشَّيْطَانِ Going back to the hadith of Mas'ud. I mean, the effect of the shaytan upon a person is إِعَالُ الْمِشَرْ وَتَكْذِيبٌ بِالْحَقِّ Is to threaten the person with evil and to try to get him to reject the truth. So he hates the truth and he rejects it. Right? This is the asal of iman is what? التَّصْدِيقُ وَالْمَحَبَّةِ 
The scholars, they say that the core of Iman is al-tashriq wal-mahabba. The statement of the heart and the action of the heart. Right? The statement of the heart, which is a person's belief. He believes in everything that came from Allah and the Prophet And his what? And his love of that. This is the core of Iman. So the shaitan, he wants to frighten that person away. So the person is averse, he's afraid. And a person doesn't like what he's afraid of. He's going to dislike acting upon his religion. He's going to threaten him with what? With evil. And he's going to try to encourage him to disbelieve in the truth. And the effect of the angel is and he has to encourage a person with good and to strengthen his heart and to encourage him to believe in the truth and to encourage him to increase in knowledge and his love of the truth in these sorts of affairs so this is what Al-Munawi he said and Allah knows best is meant by this statement of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu and that the corner from above the path, and the path is what? The path is Islam. Something that helps keep a person on the path is the angel that Allah has appointed to him. The angel that Allah has appointed to him. Tathbeet ani qalbi, and to make his heart firm. He said, and the people as regards, they're listening to the whisperings of the shaitan, and they're responding to the encouragement of the malaika, are like night and day. He says some people it's like night all the time. Some people it's like day all the time. Some people it's like more night than day for them. And they're in darkness and they're in light. They're in darkness and they're in light. They're in darkness and they're in light. They listen to this, listen to that. Out of Kulin. So Abu Abu Ali al Rayah going back to a statement. As regards the Sirat al Mustaqim, he said, I advise you to be upon the Sirat al Mustaqim, for verily it is Islam. We said this is the second level of Basira, the second level of Basira, of understanding and vision and foresight as regards the religion of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is to have vision as regards the straight path. As Sa'adi rahimullah ta'ala he said that the summarization of what the straight path is, is the fulfillment of the rights of Allah and the rights of the creation. It is what? Al-Almunafi wal Amru Salih. It is beneficial knowledge and righteous actions, the fulfillment of the rights of Allah and the rights of the creation. So a person has basira as regards the straight path. Then he has basira as regards the third thing. Ibn Qayyim he said al basira as regards al jaza al iqab al thawab as regards compensation for one's actions, reward and punishment, as regards the paradise and the fire, and as regards the reward and the punishment of Allah for the people in this world, that is a taste of what awaits them in the hereafter. And Allah said, وَلَا نُذِخَنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ He said in Surah Al-Sajda, and indeed we will cause them to taste from the lesser torment and punishment before the greater punishment and torment. So perhaps they may return back to Allah ta'ala. So a person has basir, he has vision. As regards how Allah deals with the creation, as regards an iqab wa thawab. As regards reward and punishment. As regards reward and punishment. These are the three levels of basir. Having basir as regards Allah as regards the path leading to Allah and as regards the reward and the punishment that is awaiting the people at the end of the path when they arrive for their meeting with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Hakada and Hassan al Basri he said they had more vision with their hearts as regards their religion than you have with your eyes concerning your dunya this is the fahm of the early generations, the certainty that they had. It was stated by Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari 
al-Badri radiyallahu anhu that he said that he was with Hudayf ibn al-Yaman and the narration gives us the impression that Hudayf was very ill and was perhaps close to his death and Abu Mas'ud he said Ahad ilayya he said give me an ahd meaning give me an advice that and he, I will guarantee you that I never leave off, I never abandon. Something that I always hold fast to, Ya Hudayfa. Hudayfa, he said, أَوَلَمْ يَأْتِكَ الْيَقِينَ He says, has uncertainty already come to you? You need me to tell you something like that. Don't you have certainty about your religion? Why you need an ahd? Why you need something that's binding, that's going to be binding upon yourself like that? أَوَلَمْ يَأْتِكَ الْيَقِينَ He said, has uncertainty already come to you? He said, Bella, Walladi la ilaha ghayru. He said, Of course, I swear by the one that nothing deserves to be worshipped besides. He said, Fa'lam anna dalana tahaqqa dalana. He said, The no. Speaking to Abu Mas'ud Hudayfa, he said, The no. That abdalana, that misguidance, haqqa dalana. And he, in its reality, at its epitome, its highest level. And ta'rif ma kunta tunkir, wa an tunkir ma kunta ta'rif. Is that you deem to be munkar, what you used to believe to be ma'roof. And that you deem to be ma'roof, what you used to deem to be munkar. Do you think that something is beneficial and advantageous and correct? As regards uh, the religion and as regards an aql being something logically correct and beneficial, and as regards the fitrah, and you feel comfortable with that thing that you used to think was a munkar, you think it's correct now. Not based upon evidence, based upon your desires. Based upon your desires. Because it's more in line of what you're trying to do. He said, know that the highest level of misguidance is that you were deemed to be ma'roof, which you used to deem to be munkar. Or deemed to be munkar, which you used to deem to be ma'roof. Something changed your mind. About what you used to know was in the book of Allah and the son of the Prophet Sallallahu This is the reality of misguidance. And this is the reality of a shubha. A shubha the scholars they say a doubt comes from the word shibhul, which is where something resembles something else. A person confuses truth with falsehood, and falsehood with truth. And a person, and he has rejected the truth and he has believed a lie. And lying leads to wickedness, and wickedness leads to hell. This is a silk yahdi in a bur. Just as trueness leads to righteousness, and righteousness, righteousness leads to paradise. And in person they start, they get discombobulated. They get discombobulated as regards the vision that they used to have in their religion. Concerning what they believed about Allah, what they believed about the Sirat al Mustaqeen, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sadir al Mu'mineen. The tariq of the Salaf of Salihin, what they knew that they were upon, what the Imams of the Salaf put down, the Asanini Thabita, Qawiya, the strong chains of narration going back to the companions of the Prophet وسلم, and going back to the Prophet himself. What the Imams of the Sunnah put down as regards Aqidah and Manhaj in their books, what is found in Kitab al Atisam. By Al Imam al Bukhari, Kitab al Iman of Sahih, Sahih Muslim. What is found in the book of the Sunnah, in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood. And what is found in every book of Hadith. What is found in the Ibanatain, in the Ibana al Subra, Ibana al Kubra, of Ibn Ibat al Uqbah. What is found in the volume of this book, Shar Sul Atiqala and the Sunnati wal Jama'ah, by Al Alakari. A person, they've been told, they've been directed, they've been taken by the hand by the ulama rabbaniyin. 
Lillah alhamd wal minna and directed towards the straight path. Wa bina ashiyatin wa duhaha yatabiyya. And then between today and tomorrow he changes. Zikri bo. Where'd he go? He don't even know. Nah. Ta'ab. Ya Rafi. Where you going? Where you going? Come back. What made you change? Money. What made you change? Poverty. Wa mina nasi ma yabud Allah ala harf. Allah said in the Quran, and from the people are those people who worship Allah, worship Allah ala harf. They're on the edge. In asabu hu khayrun tma anabi. If good comes to him, he has tu'maneena, his heart is at peace. Mean asabatu fitna. But if he's tried with the test, if he's stricken with the test, then qalaba ala wajhi. And he turns back upon his wajh. What is meant by his wajh is his wajha. That's what's stated by at tabari in his tafsir. And he goes back in the direction he was in before. Before Allah guided him to Islam or the Sunnah, Salafiya. He goes back. Khasir al dunya wal akhirah. He loses in this world and thereafter. These were people that came from the Arab, as was stated by Al-Tabari. So there were people from the Bedouins that came to Al-Medina during the time of the Prophet And when they were stricken with sickness and poverty and so on and so forth, they apostated from Islam and they said, the reason that we have incurred misfortune is because we follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's nothing that comes about by obedience to Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except for goodness in this world and thereafter. But a person, as regards their vision and their religion and their understanding and their foresight, and their mind is changed by what? Their mind is changed, their mind is changed by doubts and desires. And they deviate as regards what they used to deem to be correct. They deem it to be munkar. The likes of these affairs. It was stated by Hudayfi, he said, And I want you of being shifty in Allah's religion. I want you of being shifty in Allah's religion. Talawun. So where a person goes from alone to alone. He's a shapeshifter like a chameleon. He changes alwan, colors. A shapeshifter. Chameleon. I want you of being shifty. As regards Allah's religion, for in the deen Allah why? For verily Allah only has one religion. Allah only has one religion. There's only one religion for Allah to radical ta'ala. And so knowledge is that which has a tremendous effect upon the heart of a person. And Hassan al Basri he said, so they had more vision with their hearts as regards their religion than you have with your eyes concerning your dunya. He said, and they were more disinterested in what Allah made halal for them than you are in what Allah has made haram for you. That's the effects of the basira. Because knowledge has fruits. From the fruits of that, is that any of the scholars he mentioned, any that is zuhd, as zuhd, and he is being disinterested in anything that will harm you in the hereafter. And above that is what is called wara. And wara which is being disinterested in everything that will not benefit you in the hereafter. That's two different things. A person being disinterested in what harm him in the hereafter. And then above that, a person being disinterested in what will not benefit him in the hereafter. It's not necessarily everything that won't benefit him will actually harm him. Right? But out of cautious, out of cautiousness. And so they were disinterested with the things of this world, except for that which would bring them close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and they were more afraid that their actions wouldn't be accepted than you are that your bad deeds, that you will be punished for your bad deeds. And so these were just some preliminary words, inshallah, after the Salat, uh, salat al Maghrib. We want to begin reading from one of the books of the Shaykh al Sa'di, rahimullah ta'ala. That is entitled Al-Mukhtasar fi Usul Al-Aqaid Al-Diniyya. 
any uh, brief summarization of the fundamentals of the beliefs of Islam. Sa'ilin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawfiqa wa sadad wa hidayah ila sabir wa rashad. That's me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and to guide us to the path of correct behavior. Hawla wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabi Muhammad.